What is up, everyone? This is your host, Eric Holtzman, and welcome to the Mindful Motion Podcast. Hey, everyone. Uh, I am here with my colleague and friend, Ahmed Ahmed. And Ahmed is an exercise professional. He's a resistance training specialist where he studied RTS. He studied muscle system specialist, really amazing programs on how to design exercises for the individual. And he started his training career in the CrossFit space. And he felt there was more to exercise than meets the eye. So he wanted to learn more about how intricate exercise can be and what surrounds the exercise equation and human anatomy. So he got, he could get a better understanding of how to prescribe exercise for people. He started his own business called Lotus Fitness, and he lives out in New York City, where 30 minutes outside of New York City, where he offers a high level personal training um, service. And truthfully, this is the first time that I've talked to Ahmed one on one. Uh, we know a lot of similar people. We've done a lot of similar education, but we've never really crossed paths to actually chat. So this will be fun. I'll get to know him a little more as, as you guys do, too. So how are we doing, Ahmed? And uh, Eric, you're one of those guys who is consistent. Uh, you're one of those guys who wants to learn and wants to be better, and you have big goals and big dreams. And I love that, and especially with the level of care that you provide for your clients and the people in your world. I'm excited to be here. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Kind words, dude. Um, so I'd love to kick this off with just kind of, kind of talking about how you got into fitness and what your journey was like, where you started, and how you ended up here. For me, I was I was one of those kids who would go to a beach and wear like a shirt, uh, and I was nervous about the way that my man boobs would look on the beach. And it really started as a, I don't feel confident. I want to feel better in my body. Oh my god, um, I need to do something different. And so that's when I started delving into nutrition and exercise in high school. And really, I was, I was very lucky because my cousin at the time was very much invested into training and exercise and um, he showed me CrossFit and I got into CrossFit and it was a really amazing competitive outlook outlet excuse me where I can go and I can really push myself and feel like I was dead by the end of the workout and we did it in groups there was community there it was great but it wasn't until there was one session where I was doing this thing called a hang squat clean and I was like basically moving around a barbell a whole lot Um, It's one of the things that looks crazy, but really anybody could do it if they tried. The the point is this. I ended up hurting my back really bad. And it was like to the point where I would be walking down campus, like really funny. And like, I couldn't make it out to the gym. And even studying felt horrible because I couldn't sit there without feeling my back. Um, And so at that time, it was like, I feel horrible. I can't do the thing that gave me the confidence that I have now. And when I get back to this, how am I going to be? And can I even get back to this thing, CrossFit? Pretty shitty time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, and, you know, for anybody who's had back pain or or back injuries, it's, it's not fun. Um, So I ended up going to this chiropractor who became a personal trainer. And sometimes when I say that, Eric, people look at me like, what? And, and, and I had the same reaction. I was like, okay, usually people go from, you know, maybe being a personal trainer and going to a chiropractor. Mm-hmm. But it, it wasn't until he showed me how exercise isn't just about helping you look good, but it can help you feel really good that I understood why it is, why he made that transition. Mm-hmm. Um, strengthening getting the muscles to work better. That's, that's the name of the game. And, and that's what he showed me. And ever since then, I, I studied all the things that you mentioned. Um, you know, I, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do getting out of college. Um, but it wasn't until that last year where, you know, I became, I, I started training people in CrossFit in 2016. And so after that, after I realized, okay, you know, there are levels to this training thing. It's not just like, you know, you do this, you do that, but it's like, I, I really want to understand the why behind why we're doing this. What exactly is going on here? Oh, this person has arthritis. How does that change things? And, and all the intricacies that it really takes. Because at the end of the day, these people are, are trusting 
me, they're trusting you or our colleagues with their body. And, and like, that's a big deal. Like, I, I, I take that very seriously. And, it, and all I can do is think about how can I make sure that they get the best level of service? How can I make sure that I find out everything that I can to learn about their bodies? And how can I be the best personal trainer that I can become? Um, so that's where I, I made the transition. I, I knew that I wanted to study this stuff. Um, I actually joined the gym after being a trainer for a couple of years. I wanted to see what like the business side of things looked like. So I, I joined a big box gym here. It's called New York Sports Club. Um, and so I actually do live in the city. I live in Astoria, Queens. But I, I train people 30 minutes out. So it's kind of a, a quick correction on that. But yeah, so after that, I uh, opened up a gym a year after graduating college called Loaded Fitness. Um, and then called and um, an amazing time to to learn um, to you know about myself about how I thought about the body uh, how I train people and ultimately what I want to do for the rest of my career so it's been an awesome ride it's been an awesome ride yeah it sounds like you know that really hits home with me and I'm sure a lot of people I um, <clears throat> have many instances of hurting myself and Recently, like six months ago, had another lower back episode. It was pretty innocuous what I was doing. It's just sometimes things get triggered, even when you're being smart. But CrossFit's like a level of extreme more than we do now. And the amount of injuries, there's no other form of training that people get hurt more doing than CrossFit. Because of the things you said, it's competitive. It's not really about health. It's more about com like just completing it and winning. And that's fun, but it comes with some, uh, you know, some side effects. And I think uh, when you think about most people, what they really want, like you said, to be confident, have a body that <clears throat> they feel good in and that they can, you know, continue to keep that requires consistency. And if you're hurting yourself, you know, week in, week out with training, that's pretty much impossible to maintain. So I think that your journey to where you are now, it's like a really good stepping stone. And that's probably why you're so passionate about it, right? Because you're trying to get that message out to people. Hey, look, this doesn't have to be this, this intense, com competitive, burdensome thing. It can be something that helps you feel good and you can sustain over your whole life, which is amazing. Um, you know, you're one of the few people. Yeah, you got something it's to something say? Something that's, that's life me has been life changing. It changed my, uh, you know, not not just the way that I look at myself, but it changed even think, and and it had such crazy implications on my relationships and on the way that I work with people on everything. Because what exercise showed me was that if you give your body a stress intermittently, in a for everything that I want to improve on. Um, and when people, when people, you know. So your, uh, your audio is coming out. Maybe take the earbuds out. Technical difficulties. Little technical issues. <laughs> um, Maybe just go back to your computer audio. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's better. Let's just do that. All right, back on track. <clears throat> okay. Hang on, Eric. Sorry, guys, about this technical issue. We were trying to deal with it beforehand, but... I'm going to go into settings real quick and make sure we got... Cool. You know, um, out of all the colleagues that I, I know, you probably put out the most content on social media. I literally see you on the top of my feed like every hour. I feel like you do like 20 posts a day or something, <laughs> which is awesome because that's a lot of useful information for people. I'm curious, like, how do you manage to do that day in, day out and not like feel like what motivates you to do so much? Very good question. Thank you. Um, 
And just off the bat, you've you've inspired a couple of those videos, just so you know. So thank you. Um, and so, you know, ultimately it's of exercise. And, you know, sometimes I put exercises out there and people are like, oh, I, I never thought of that. Or like, I didn't know that that was even something that you could do if you had arthritis in your hands or whatever it is. And once you know the ingredients that make up exercise, the options are endless. So insofar as coming up with ideas for the videos, it's pretty easy because there are so many different, uh, you know, computations and so many different combinations of joint positions and joint movements that you could do to create an exercise. And so the content is endless. And so I'm lucky in that way, in terms of that this body can move in so many different ways and we can do so many things with it and we could load it in so many different ways. So um, what inspires me, man, too, is also like getting the word out that, I, again, exercise isn't just about helping you look good, but it can help you feel really good. And, and for people like my mom and my dad, uh, who I, I, I love to work with myself, this it's the difference between them having a good time with their little nephews and, and not being able to have those memories. And family, for me, is, is the number one thing in my life. And so if people can feel better in their bodies and then do activities with the people that they love, valuable. And then, and that's how I look at things. And so if people get ideas from the work that I put out. Um, I love that. I love that. Yeah, that makes sense. You find a lot of reward from helping others. And that, I can see that you do charity work and you do events and you're giving your time for free. So it definitely shows. Um, what do you enjoy like most about helping people with their, with their exercise, with their training? helping people it's true i think we all recently so i'm gonna take the long way in answering this question okay i recently started a egyptian american networking group right and there's this saying in Egypt that what does that mean it means people are for each other it just saying when everybody contributes to one another that's what makes life special um, and I, I just always cared. Like, I, I, I don't really know how else to put it. Um, one time it, I, talking about myself like this is hitting my, is, is, is kind of say is that one time when I was a kid, there, there was a nest on the window next to where I slept. And I remember just being so curious, like I love nature and that kind of stuff. And so I opened up the window and looking looking over and I see, I see four to five eggs in there. Um, but the mom has, has flown away. And so only the eggs are there. And I'm so curious. And so I take one and I pick it up. And I'm like looking at it. I'm like, wow, there's life in here. Like, but then I bring it. And I was like 11 years old. I was just so upset. I was like, oh no, the mom's gonna come back and her baby isn't gonna be there. And, and like, I just went through this whole thing. Um, and I think what it comes down to is, and you're making me, or like, I'm going deep here. So I didn't, I didn't know we, we'd be delving down this way, but I'm enjoying this. It, it really comes down to, it really comes down to empathizing and like wanting everybody to live the best lives that they can possibly live. Like on that, high level I, I want people to be happy and um, that's where it comes from got it yeah that makes sense i mean we're all driven by things that are deep within us even if we're not aware of it so at least you have that awareness that comes in handy <laughs> um you know now changing directions you've done some of these educational things like i have what would you say uh, has been the most impactful from these educational systems in your training process say just one um because 
think from the point of view that there were some there were some courses that I've taken that have helped me on a philosophical view, uh, really high level. And then there are some things that have helped me look deeper, take the telescope or, you know, take the telescope out and kind of see the intricacies of really what's going on with exercise and everything. And so, because like with MSS, muscle system specialist, that, that blew my mind. Uh, one of the things that really drew me to taking that course was the level of thinking and meaning like everybody colleagues like you and, and people that we know let's take exercise and dispense it which is a rts idea but it's really about how can we take how can we consider what's going on with people's bodies what they can do with it what's going on and how can we create exercise especially for them so that's kind of where the RCS comes in. And so it's tough to say just one, uh, but, but what I will say is what's informed my education, like kind of the roots in which I, 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 I laid down so that I could learn more uh, was MSS. That, that, that definitely just helped me see the body in a way um, that I never even thought about before. So it was that one. Yeah, yeah I had a similar experience. It kind of shook my world a little bit and help actually bring some clarity where there was some uncertainty, um, clarity and uncertainty, I guess, which is kind of an odd thing to say, <laughs> but, um, you know, when we think about your business and the clients you help, like, are there certain types of people that you work with on a, on a more regular basis than others? Like what kind of people do you tend to help? What kind of problems do you solve? <clears throat> work with um work with uh, work with people in my network um and people have all different kinds of things going on but it's typically the people that do stuff that they love to do because something in their body is giving them grief um Going watching their grandkid play soccer. The balance to go up the stairs of their. It's really related to that thing. Something in my body is saying no when I want to do something, and I'm tired of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a common occurrence. Um, do you mind uh, taking your earbuds out and just using the computer? It keeps cutting out for some reason. <clears throat> and I feel like you're saying some uh, good stuff and then it just goes out. I'm like, oh, no. <clears throat> yeah, there. I don't strike out or here. Yeah, this is off. good. Uh, okay. People. <clears throat> um, Bam. All right, cool. I think this okay. will be more, more reliable and it sounds the same anyway. Um, awesome. So... When you think about people who have pain in their body, which seems to be like very common, um, maybe it's not so bad that they need to do anything about it, or it is bad enough that it's in, you know, encroaching on their life. Like from a standpoint of like designing exercise for people, is there any difference in your mind between training someone with a regular fitness goal versus someone with like pain in their body and rehab within like the rehab exercise perspective? Do you find there's differences or is it the same thing, but you just have to, uh, maybe you can be more aggressive or not as aggressive. <clears throat> yeah. So there is that spectrum of how aggressive do you want to be? Um, but you know, it's at the end of the day, it's the same stuff. We have muscles and how can we use physics and, and how can we make sure that this person gets to where they need to go? Um, so ultimately, the the thought process is the same in terms of what do we need to do? Like, well, what are the needs of this person? Um, and how can I use exercise to manage that? But I think my, I, I tend to, I tend to uh, think about things in a way where I'm being super considerate if somebody has had any kinds of serious orthopedic issues mm -hmm. so what do i mean by that i feel like you know i i will tend to i like to measure three times and cut once 
but when somebody has had some serious issues, just because like me, I've had some, some serious issues, like with my back, for example. And if somebody who I was going to for training, wasn't taking that into consideration, making decisions, like I wouldn't like that. Um, I like to do the same thing with people. So, you know, at, at the end of the day, I think it's, it's the same, but I think being extra mindful is, it, uh, is what you need to do. In, mm-hmm. in yeah. So they don't have some sort of reaction or an adverse event related to the stress you're placing on them. Um, mm-hmm. So in that, like what, what kind of considerations when you're thinking about um, age, right? And I'm sure you have clients who are older, maybe 50, 60 or something like that versus someone in their 20s or 30s. What kind of considerations do older do you have to have for older clients um, or what kind of considerations do older people need to have with their exercise versus someone who's in their 30s? Mm, that, that's a good one. Eric. So it's, it's really like recovery time, uh, how many the frequency of exercise. Um, the things that they need to do outside of the gym to recover at you sleep um, and how much sleep they need uh, nutrition. Um, those, those are the considerations when, so, you know, I see somebody who's 70 and be and, and 30 as different insofar as their ability to eke out what they can from each and every session, right? It's just going to be a slower progression typically. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is completely fine because progress is progress. Um, But I think that the main difference that I account for, I don't know if you, I would love to hear from you um, is personality when it comes to creating exercises. Uh, There are some people who like to go into the gym and regardless of their goal, they like to feel a certain way by the end of the session. Mm -hmm. And then there are other people that like to feel in a different way right so that's usually the thing that i account for um you know on on a very high level because if people are giving us an hour of their time or whatever it is how can we make sure that they get exactly what they're looking for not just in terms of their goals but in terms of the experience itself Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what makes the the art of personal training really fun too but what do you think about that about uh about what about older clients Uh, about about uh you know, age as being a variable when it comes down to it, but personality is almost being like a, as a a more important variable for the way that a session flows. No, I think you, I think you said it pretty on point because like at the end of the day, people are hiring you to make them feel a certain way, right? And if you, from a professional standpoint, recognize that maybe they shouldn't push themselves, but they're there to push themselves, you have to figure out how you can do it safely. Otherwise, they're not going to come back and then you can't really help them. Right. Um, It's really crazy, too, is like I think you from a science standpoint, we know as we get older, things are going downhill. We're losing strength. We're losing endurance. Our recovery isn't as good. Things that you just alluded to. Um, But it doesn't seem to be across the board the same for everybody. Right. Like I know 70 year olds who can train every day seem to recover fine. Whereas I know 50 year olds who can't even train twice a week without being too much. So I think like we all know, everybody's so individually unique on so many levels that we keep it in the back of our minds, but we have to just kind of address each session and see what their subjective interpretation is. And then just kind of use that information, use the data to direct us. Um, and I'm guessing that's probably why we even do assessments, right? So I mean, you come from a similar background to me. I'm actually curious. Do you implement the same assessment process? Have you customized it in any way? Like, what's your assessment look like for someone who's never heard about what we do? Can you describe it? Yeah, so it's it's similar to a lot of the taking a look at posture, with the influence of gravity versus not, um, girth measurements, weight distribution, uh, range of motion, strength. Uh, rate of force development, taking a look at everything that I can see in a period of time that's reasonable. But then if there's something like super specific that somebody's coming to me for, like I have a client who's coming to me for, um, who's coming to me for some ankle, serious ankle stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm thinking about, when I'm thinking about the assessment, it's like, okay, I, I need to look at that specific area 
but I also need to look at how that area influences other pieces in the body that all relates to the same goal of, I want to be able to play this sport while still feeling good. Um, and so the assessment usually looks the same in terms of finding out how somebody moves, but it could have a specific, uh, it could have a specific direction based on that person's goal. So ultimately it comes down to the goal. Yeah. Yeah. You tailor it to their needs, but you're still going about it in a similar way. Like, can you unpack that a little bit about how say an ankle can affect other things? Like what does that look like exactly? Yeah. So if you have damage in your ankles, um, Say, say, for example, that something happens to your Achilles tendon. And it's not just the tendon itself that gets damaged, but you have other materials in there that get damaged too. Because it's impossible for just one thing in the same general area to get impacted by that high level of force that made that, uh, made that change, made that material damage. And so... Once the body gets information from that area, it's going to change things. It's going to be like, okay, there's something going on here, but I need to keep going. So how can I figure out something somewhere else to make sure that I keep going? Um, and so, you know, th this morning I was taking a look at um, how somebody's ankle affects their back. And it's, it's really interesting because the first time that I even came to terms with that, I was like, how does that happen? But then it makes sense that everything affects everything. Uh, and, and it's almost like, you know, that that butterfly effect idea. Um, How do you determine it was affecting their lower back? Like, what was the steps there? Good question. So it was something like, okay, get these muscles around the ankle to, to turn on. And then let's see if the muscles in your back are able to turn on. Um, and so uh, to go into specifics, you know, s move your ankle and get your toes down towards the ground. And then what you're going to do from there is you're going to move your spine to the left side. Can you maintain having your spine to the left side while mm -hmm. maintaining this ankle position? And then no. And then it's like, okay, so how can we influence your body to strengthen the pieces that it needs to strengthen so that your back works better, so that your feet work better, so that your ankle works better. Everything, everything, because everything is a system at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Just because there's a problem in, in one place doesn't mean that there's, uh, excuse me, means that there has to, there has to be repercussions for that in the rest of the system. And so it's a little bit like the story I heard from, um, from a friend of mine. So a friend of mine, uh, she was, she was in her sister's house and her sister was cooking in the kitchen. She was making some stuff and she needs some help. She needs some help from my friend. So her sister calls out to her a couple of times. She doesn't, she doesn't answer because she can't hear. Her. And then her sister goes, goes to her and she like, you know, she gets really upset and she starts saying, Hey, like, what the heck? Didn't you hear me? And my friend was like, what's going on here? Like, why are you being upset at me? And then she comes around and says, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Actually, I was just fighting with my husband. Okay. What does this story have to do with anything? Well, that's an example of how one problem somewhere, the relationship between the sister and the husband, can impact something else that you may not even consider when it comes down to it, right? Mm -hmm. So the sister, because of the problem with her husband, now she's being mean to my friend. That kind of thing, right? A problem somewhere can affect things in other places and cause problems in other places. So that's that idea. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way of describing it in a, a simple, simple fashion. Just curious, was it his opposite side, like right ankle, left lower back? Uh, no, it was, it was actually left ankle, left lower back. Oh, okay. Just, just wondering. I'm a yeah. you know, mechanics brain. I'm always like, uh, uh, put, I'm already thinking it through. I'm like, I wonder how that happened. <laughs> and sometimes yeah. you can't tell, you know, I might actually be able to tag you in exactly what I'm talking about. And then maybe you can take a look. <laughs> so, you know, when you think about, uh, there's this big space in the fitness industry for mobility training and injury prevention, because mobility training, I guess, is 
what prevents injuries. I don't know why that's got lumped together somehow. Um, Because sometimes more mobility actually is a problem, but that's never really talked about. Um, But anyway, do you do anything with your clients or yourself personally for mobility, for injury prevention, if you will? Um, Yeah, it's kind of like considering, okay, what needs to be in place for something to get injured? And usually that means not moving well or muscles not being strong enough or having endurance or having the ability to produce strength quickly. Uh, and then we take a look at those areas and strengthen them. So all the mobility work that I do with clients looks exactly like an exercise would look. Um, mm. You know, I, I might do some things like give them assistance in specific positions or uh, change where the exercise is heavy versus where it's light to account for their ability to move into greater ranges and work on that. But it from the outside, like looking in, looks exactly the same. It just it's, it's exercise. But, you know, coming out of the CrossFit space, a lot of people used to mobilize a lot. And even I, I was crazy in college. I used to, like, um, work out, like, twice a day and then, like, spend an hour for recovery. I, I guess I had nothing better to do. But, I, but I, I ended up doing, like, a whole bunch of stuff where it was, like, you know, you get the band, you put the band around the ankle, and, like, you tug on the band, um, and, you know, I, you foam roll and you do all this stuff. But really what I found is that, getting getting the movers stronger is the best thing that you can do for injury prevention yeah i mean it seems like a lot of the mobility training systems out there are just simply lighter less intense versions of exercise which allows for recovery and not a lot of stress which is simple but it's made to seem like this magical thing which we know is not really what's happening um and the opposite and the opposite of that too, dude, right? So you're saying like sometimes like less intense. But how many times have I seen somebody do like a pigeon pose and try to shove their hip into a position and then something in their hip feels horrible the next day, right? That, that's, yeah, yeah. right? Passively mm-hmm. putting themselves into those positions like that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a good point. Not everything that seems light and easy is not innocuous or not going to bother you. Um, I've definitely been there many times. Uh you learn, hopefully. Otherwise, if you just keep doing it, that might not be so sensible. I think that's called insanity, really. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, you you glossed over something I think is important when you talked about injury prevention, which was uh, making sure you have enough force production or strength as well as enough endurance. You know, um, I think these things get conflated oftentimes. But what um like how do you determine if someone maybe doesn't have enough strength to do something and is causing pain or maybe their endurance is the issue and that's causing pain like how do you tease that stuff out <clears throat> so it's impossible to just say somebody doesn't have enough strength in a vacuum what do they not have enough strength for and what are we relating this idea of strength to and so the best way that i've come up with is taking a look at the right side versus the left side, figuring out whether or not there's a strength difference. And, and, and so I do different things. Uh, you know, I like to use dynamometers. Uh, I like to use specific exercises. Uh, sometimes I'll use my hands. It really just depends on what we're looking at with that person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so dynamometer meaning like a device that reads out a force output or how many pounds you're pushing with. Your exactly. hands, if you're shoving on someone, if they move or if you feel a difference, things like that give you some input as far as like how hard they're pushing. Yes, yes. Uh, and the experience of the person who's doing those strength tests is so important too, because if the, if they feel if they feel strong in one area, but to me, I'm saying, hey, maybe this side doesn't feel as strong as the other side. Then there's some like what that's so important to realize that their brain is saying, no, this actually feels better than this side. And that when we're on different pages, I think that's, that's when something really cool can happen because then Mm. it's like, how can I delve deeper into this? And maybe that wasn't the right strength test for, for this person going on, you know, having this problem. Um, And, you know, sometimes people need other ways of, of understanding and decoding their subjective experiences. Um, so, yeah, you know. that's uh, that's a good point. I mean, I, I run into that issue a lot, and I think it's just sometimes you have to get creative and 
customize it for them like everything else. Right. Um, You know, switching gears and talking about pain for a second, like what's, what do you do if someone's doing an exercise, a client, and they say they feel pain in their joint or in their muscle during that exercise when they're performing it? Like, how do you work around that? What what, what are your sort of um, steps or approaches that you would take? So top three things I would do if somebody felt pain somewhere and they still wanted to exercise. Number one, I would work the opposite side of the joint. So what do I mean by that? Say somebody's doing exercise like this, they're bending their elbow and they have some sort of resistance in their hand and they're trying to work on these muscles over here. And I might say, okay, instead of you trying to bend your elbow against resistance, why don't we try to straighten your elbow against resistance and see how that feels. So that's number one. Uh, Number two is I would work on the other side. So somebody has pain in their right knee when they're doing an exercise. Let's try to do the same exercise on the left knee and see what happens. Because there's research out there to suggest that just by doing exercise on the opposite side, that side where you may be feeling the pain will still get a benefit from that. Um, And then number three is looking at getting the muscles around that area. And when I say around like 360 degrees, strong. So those are the top three things that I would do with somebody if they had pain and they still want to exercise. Yeah, it gives people a lot of options. So if you're doing a chest press, bothering your shoulder, try a row, work that, and then maybe go back to chest press, see if it's better. Yeah. Or that bilateral transfer thing, which is work the other side. Maybe the, the painful side gets a little better too if you do the right and then the transfers to the left. That's definitely possible. I've seen that before. Um, you know, w- talking about top three things from your experience, like what are the top three reasons people get hurt to begin with? Like when they're training, um, too much, too soon. Um, In looking at what somebody else is doing and trying to do the same thing. And then going back to something that you used to do without being in the same position that you were in then. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like you're saying just lots of different degrees of inappropriateness, essentially. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And it can come in a lot of forms for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and then there are like a whole bunch of things there too, like other considerations, not, not based on the activity that may have led to, sensations like pain but also things like how much sleep how's your nutrition all this stuff right because if i'm if i'm here saying hey everything affects everything you know your ankle affects your back then it's it's only makes sense for me to say if you don't get enough sleep that's going to impact this stuff too Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. and we can safely say most people are sleep deprived especially with our light environment especially in new york city that's no doubt (laughs) yeah yeah 100 percent and also, you know, I love New York City, but also like the hustle culture, right? Nobody, I know this guy who gets four hours of sleep every night. And I, I just, I can't, like, I can't yeah. even, I, I mean, I feel, feel horrible. That's, I wouldn't be able to function like that. It's a fast track to neurogenitive uh, disorders. And... Yeah, more, more power to him, dude. It's, it's tough. Um, it's tough. What's, what's, do you do any specific sleep stuff? Uh, not really too specific. I just, I, once I put in a, um, chili pad, you know what that is? No, it sounds tasty though, but I'm, I don't think yeah. I uh, always wake up hot and sweaty. Um, okay. so they make this device, they make mattresses that do it, but I have a device you put on the mattress under your sheet and it pumps cold water into the mattress and keeps your, your, um, mattress around. For me, I like it as cold as it goes, like 55 degrees. Oh, so as soon as I did that, my deep sleep went from 30 minutes to like 92 hours consistently. So that's one thing I do. I wear a sleep mask and earplugs. That also helps to drown out the environmental stuff. Um, but I used to do red like blocking glasses, but I lost them. So I stopped. But uh, there's definitely some room to improve in the sleep game for sure. It's a big commitment, man. You got to shut the lights off at 8, 830. 
it's like I, I barely get home at like yeah. seven thirty, so I'm not really ready to do that yet. But yeah. you know, you mentioned being someone who likes nature. It's funny that you live in New York City. It's not really much there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it's they, they call it the concrete jungle, but we're lucky enough to have parks and stuff like that. And uh, I was just in New Jersey, the state right over. Um, New Yorkers always make fun of New Jersey, but I was there for my cousin and he, he lives about an hour away and there's so much beautiful, beautiful things over there. Beautiful. Nature. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sure you have a couple plants you can look at in your, your room. Just two. Yeah. Um, so just to kind of wrap up on this pain thing, like in your experience from the people that you've worked with who have pain or what you've seen or heard from people, like what are the most common like mis misunderstandings that people have about pain in their body? So this one's going to be dark but that you can always fix it. Unfortunately. Mm. Um, and that there is one reason as to why it happens. Uh, and that it's a sensation. It's, it's like an, it's like an emotion that uh, is lingering, but you feel it more at different times. And so if you think about it as this thing that, uh, you know, that you are partnered with as opposed to something that's happening to you, I think there's a lot to say to how effective that could be. Just, just thinking about what that pain is inside of you. Right? And yeah. Yeah. That's a, I've heard that quite a bit, like pain being an emotion because it is so visceral. Um, and your mental state does play a big role in how you experience it because it doesn't have to be this big burden. Some people have pain in their body. They don't even care. Yeah. Other people, it overtakes their whole life. Um, so yeah, there's something to be said about that. No question. And sometimes you're right. Like some things don't, uh, will never fully go away. If you've had enough damage to something like one of my clients had a collarbone ligamentous, like complete rip or something like that. And it pops out real easy doing exercises and, it can get better, but I don't think it's ever going to go completely better because yeah. of the damage there. So you have to be willing to maybe accept some aspect of it, but keep trying to work towards it. I always live on the side of it could be better if we just get creative and work through it. Right. But yeah, I mean, you know, same thing. I, I think that's a, that's a really high level thought in terms of things can always get better. Sure. And I think that when things have a ceiling to, where they can get better and accepting that, that's also a lesson. That's also something beautiful that you can take out of it. Um, and you, you'll get better in other ways from that, right? Building that tenacity of like, just, just because I have this doesn't mean, uh, you know, my life is over or something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, man, attitude is everything. I, one of my clients, she sent me a preview of uh, this, this Netflix show on Blue Zones. Have you heard of Blue Zones before? Oh yeah. Yeah, like where a lot of people live until they're, you know, in their nineties to hundred years old. Very misreported, but yeah. Really? Oh, well, tell just, me about that. Yeah, I mean it's just uh I'm, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Dude, I'm totally curious though. I mean please. Oh, well, um just from what I've heard from many different fields is that uh the blue zones are commonly used as an arsenal for vegans to say, hey, look, these zones, this is where people eat the most vegetables. That's why they live the longest. But in fact, it's not exactly the whole story. Um, and, that, and some of those blue zones are high meat eaters. And that is um, like uh, Okinawa and Japan. That's beef is one of the staples of their food. Mm. Somehow that gets left under, like not part of the discussion for the vegans. Anyway, so there's some complexity to it but it is interesting where people live in these places they wow. do live longest and it seems like the most common reason is community healthy lifestyle habits not so much the food but anyway like a yeah. little tangent there no dude uh thank you for that i, I um 
always need ammo against vegans. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, dude, no, it's it's it, the idea behind the community aspect is right. Like if you hang out with your friend, how do you feel afterwards? It was a good time. You feel great, right? Depends on the friend. <laughs> oh, well, it depends on the friend. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, but yeah, man, so I think it's the the good feelings that you get from something and how you can and how that can make your life better. And, and so that's what I'm trying to say about this whole, you know, just because something doesn't completely get better doesn't mean that um, things, things are horrible. Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a lesson to learn. I think that's part of what exercise gives people is, hey, look, we have adversity. We're facing a challenge. Let's overcome it and find a way to work through it. Doesn't mean that it's always perfect or we love the outcome, but it's the the effort and the coming in and doing that challenge anyway. That's where the real benefits come from. Not so much the six pack, even though that's nice to have. Right. I mean, no one wants to be flabby and too overweight but either way um no yeah, well, said. well said dude well said the adversity piece and acting and lieu of that yeah that's what life's about yeah 100 percent. it just for people that aren't into it the way we are it's hard to get them there but that is part of what what i know you and i we try to do um you know in that light do you when you work with someone do you find you have to help them create clear goals to strive for, or do they always have goals or do you find it's not a big, important thing to worry about their goals? Like what, what is your take on goal setting? Yeah. So everybody who I've worked with has a specific goal and that's something that I need to start working with somebody because why spend time with somebody uh, if you're not exactly sure where you're headed, right? So I, I, I like to ask questions when people come in uh, for a few reasons. One, to figure out if I can even help them with what they need, and, and two, so that they can come up with what they need for themselves, one of my clients one time wrote me a Google review just on the questions that I, that I asked him during our first like goal setting meeting. Right. Um, somebody else like, you know, she wrote back to me saying, Hey, I really love the questions that you asked. And I get that feedback a lot. And it's that feedback is so important because everybody wants to be heard. And, and if people are, are coming to me without goals, I think that just means that they haven't been okay with the idea that they can even have goals and what is, and, and they haven't discovered what's important to them yet. Uh, mm -hmm. It's fine because I'm completely okay with taking on that role to help them figure that out. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is surprising how many people might come by not really sure what they want. A lot of times just like, Hey, I have this shoulder problem. Can you help me fix it? It's like, Wait, hold on. <laughs> you know, what's actually underneath all this? Because that's what's going to get you to resolving it or um, being happy, right? Because ultimately, the shoulder thing is inconsequential. It's just an aspect of your existence that is a tiny little thing. But what about all the other stuff that really matters to you? And that's what's going to keep you coming back and keep you training and working, you know? Yeah. It's tricky. It is. It is tricky. And, um, you know, until until you have that conversation with somebody, sometimes it's tough. But th that's the value of listening and asking the right questions, uh, because sometimes you never really know what's underneath that. And if what's underneath that is something that you can help with, then that's a match made in heaven. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, why why are you going to spend the time? Why am I going to spend the time? What are yeah. we doing here? Um, and again, the value of questions. One time I saw, I saw a lady, she, so I see her like Frank, like she's uh excuse me, she's circling around, looking down at the ground. And I, I just got so curious, like, what is, what is she doing? So I look and I see that there is a insect down on the ground and she looks at it and she's taking a video of it. And then bam, she stomps on it again. Bam, bam. And I'm like, okay, like what's going on here? So, you know, I, 
I thought in my head, maybe this person just really hates insects in buildings. Eric, what, what might you come up with? Like, just based off of that, what, why might somebody be doing something like that? Yeah, I mean, I would think she is afraid of bugs. I mean, most people are. Yeah, yeah, most, most people are. Uh, so here's the real reason. She saw this bug and she saw somewhere that those bugs came from China. Mm. And she wasn't happy with that. And, and mm. you know, it is what it is. I, had, I was like, oh, okay. But I would have never, ever guessed that unless I asked her, hey, why are you doing this? And so that's just the border. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it, it's, I mean, that's the point to the fact that like you never really know what's going on until you ask why and people have their reasons and sometimes it, you can't even guess those reasons and it's irresponsible to guess those reasons if they're coming to you with something. Hmm. Yeah, that was a really good way of describing what we were talking about in a real life setting. Um, so a couple more questions. I'm curious what you would, what you would say, like you train a client you're done with the workout. How do you know it was successful? Like what tells you that it was a good workout, that it, it you gave them what they needed or they got what they wanted? That's another way to think of it. <clears throat> yeah. So one thing that I've started doing is with my client files next to their name, I write their main goal of our professional relationship together. And as long as we're both on the same page, that what we got out of today was getting closer to that goal then we know we're on the right track. Um, and so it's very much goal-driven in that way. Mm. Like, hey, you want to go up the stairs with more ease because you're afraid that you're not going to be able to continue to do that at your, at your house, okay? In this session, do you feel like you got closer to that? Yeah. Okay. Same. How's your energy yeah. right now? Oh, I feel good. Are you smiling? I ask myself. Yeah. Okay. We're good. That's that's basically the way that I that I take all of that into account. Yeah, simple and right to the point. I think that makes sense because that's what it's all about, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, man. It's it's really fun. I think what you and I do. It's fun and it's also complex and it has it's so uh you know i think you've heard this before like the science and the art of it and then and then also considering the person in front of you it's we're very blessed i must say yeah i mean it's it's a lot of fun little components to personal training you got psychology you got physics you got anatomy you have combining them all together the nervous system the brain yeah it's a uh, a lot to think about sometimes too much you got a triage right what's important right now in the moment <laughs> otherwise you'll drive yourself crazy yeah which i've been guilty of a few times you know <laughs> having Especially that overwhelm yeah 100 yeah. percent. so are, is there anything new right now that you're fascinated with things you're looking into you know related to fitness or maybe not yeah so anatomy so it's so important um, I, I started studying anatomy, you know, back when I was in college, but there's the amount of information that you can look at to figure out what is this thing. It's endless. It's absolutely mm -hmm. endless. Uh, and so I'm always interested in how everything affects everything. That's, that's, that's pretty much it. Is there any particular resource you're looking into? Because that's actually something I put on the wayside for a while, but I'm like, damn, I, I think about a specific joint system. I'm like, I don't really know it as well as I like. Yeah. You know, and then it's like, where can I get the information I need instead of having to look through 100 textbooks to get that piece of information? Because it can be that. It might be more time looking than actually learning what you want to learn. <laughs> yeah. So, um, at risk of sounding too much like a millennial here, but chat GPT is so helpful, dude. Oh, I haven't even used it yet. Oh man. It's so helpful. It's so helpful. And then also I've been looking at, um, there's something I'm going to invest in, like getting one of those real life skeletons and really delving deep into that with my textbook and everything. Look, looking at muscles and their 
uh, you know, their attachments and their functions based off of that. Um, and I say that just because you and I know that the, depending on the position, things might be different than what the book says. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, I, I like to, I like to study like a muscle a day and just kind of do that. Uh, I do something very simple. It's like this website online. I don't even know what it's called, honestly, but those are really the two things. Just continuing to get as much information about muscles. I can. Cause I think there's like 600, 636 muscles, something like that. It depends on which uh, reference you look at. It could be six something up to 800 and something, depending on how many divisions they decide to give the muscle. <laughs> so yeah. Like it's, I, yeah, it depends on the, on the source you're looking at. Do you use, uh, you know, I've been wanting to do chat GPT. Do you use it to help you write copy or your wording for your post or anything like that? No. Um, so on, on the, on the copy side of things, I actually just invested into a copy program. Um, I first started studying copy with, uh, some of the folks from FPM shout out to FPM. Um, love those guys. And then I also, uh, read a couple of books on it and one of my friends, he wrote copy for somebody. And so we, we did like a, an exchange of education where he was teaching me that. And, um, yeah, and most recently I just invested in this copy program because mm. I, words words are so powerful. Yeah, it's it's uh it's a lot. It's what people they need to hear something that makes them feel something that will help them take action or understand what's important. That's it's all about that structure and what you choose to put in it. Um, so I know you had some ups and downs with your business with COVID. That that was really a, a an unfortunate situation. I know a lot of people did have that problem, but, you know, looking out in the future, like what are your plans for your business moving forward? Like where do you want to end up? Yeah. So it's tough because there are so many different directions that I'm thinking of right now. I did the thing where, you know, I had, I had a space and, is mine and I got to do all the things uh, you know it was the first time I got up on a ladder and painted being a city boy never done anything like that uh, and so that is it my cup of tea really and so I really love the situation that I have going on right now I'm still trying to think about the best way to help the most amount of people possible and so I so what I will say is that I've been focusing more on my education um, and where I want to be as a personal trainer in the future, as opposed to where my, my business is going, mm. uh, because regardless, I think there's going to be, you know, the, where my business is, is an offshoot of where I am. And so I've been focused more on that. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, if you need a place to go, come out to LA, you can work at my space. Oh, <laughs> LA sounds like fun. It is, uh, it is, man. It will be a little less intense than New York City, but worse in other ways with driving and stuff like that. So, yeah. so give and take everywhere you go. <clears throat> yeah, dude. I, well, so I think you, you said in the beginning, this is the first time that you and I are talking like just one-on-one like this. Mm-hmm. Um, where can I learn more about your journey? Because I'm, I want to know how you got to where you got to and Oh yeah, man. Well, uh, where can you learn more about my journey? I don't know. I don't, I did a post a while back. Um, maybe we should do another one and I can give you a scoop on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I'm totally curious. I have a lot of respect for the work that you do. So I'd love to learn more. Yeah, man. I appreciate that. Well, we can always chat off the, off the, uh, podcast channel. Cool. <laughs> Dude, I really appreciate you taking the the hour to chat with me and give some of your insights and all that. I think we got some really, really valuable um, snippets of information in there. And it went in it went in an interesting direction. <laughs> yeah, this was a lot of fun, and uh, thank you so much for having me. And uh, for everybody that stuck around through those technical difficulties, your resilience, you're a champ, you're a winner, no. um, and I appreciate your time, dude. Thanks again, man. And we'll have to we'll have to do this again in the future. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you. All right.